that would be ice. All of that is ice. Yep. Welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. Today is day four on Lake of the Ozarks. And uh, day one was just kind of, let's see if we can find some open water. We did, caught those two paddlefish, um, caught that eight, couple, couple Asian carp. Didn't know what the one was, it was weird markings, but definitely an Asian carp. And today I have two options. I can go back to the river and attempt to find crappie on that river. I don't think they're in there right now. I think it's more of a migratory thing. Um, I think they, uh, what happens a lot of times, and I know this happens mostly in like Texas, Oklahoma, crappie will be in these creeks during a very specific window of the season. You know, it might be two weeks, might be two months, but they're in the creeks or the rivers during a very specific time of year. I talked to probably, I don't know, five or six locals at the boat ramp, and they all said they catch them really good on some dock pilings straight across from the boat ramp. The problem is uh, those dock pilings, most of them are on dry land. So my thinking is those crappie migrate from one part of the river to the, to the other once the river floods or goes back up to the summer pool levels. So I got two options. I can go downstream of that river for, well, I think the second day I went down like five miles. I can go further than that and hopefully run into a school of crappie somewhere. Could do that. Or I can stay here and fish out of that. Fish out of that right there. The, the uh, heated dock at my resort, Point View Resort. If you don't have a boat, you can always fish out of that. So I'm leaning towards the option of fishing in this heated dock just so I can actually catch some crappie for you guys. I do want to catch some to bring home. So for right now, let's get down to the heated dock and try to catch some fish. We're going back to the ice rods that we did in day one. And this guy specifically, 32 inch ACC. This is four pound test. I'm gonna take this little guy off and we're gonna tie on a slip bobber rig and hopefully double up on some crappie. I'm gonna be using a slip bobber rig as like a dead stick and then I'm gonna be jigging with this other rod. For ice fishing, I highly recommend these guys. They're these simple yarn stops. Um, you're not trying to cast anything, so uh, those rubber bobber stops really aren't necessary. This is one of the few times I use these yarn stops is during ice fishing or any type of pure vertical jig, vertical bobber presentation. You're not casting it at all. Um, these do slide a little bit, so be wary. Of but uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. You just put that plastic piece up the line and then grab the yarn, pull it off and onto the line and then pull that plastic piece all the way through until it's off the line and there you go. And now we're just gonna tighten this yarn piece up and we're gonna cut off our tag ends, not too tight. And you, you don't wanna cut down to the actual knot itself, leave like a half inch. It's not really gonna matter. Just in case you need to tighten it up again. So I'm gonna leave about half to three quarters of an inch when I cut this yarn off. It's just enough to grab so you can tighten this thing back up if it does slip. All right, so there's our slip stop. Plastic, make sure you guys can see it. See how there's two little inserts where you can put the line through? This one, the one on the bottom, the second one, it's meant for a fixed line position. The one at the top is meant for a slip bobber. It's also got a hollowed out grommet. So you can put the line all the way through the middle of the bobber. These are called three in ones. Actually, this is the Revo X, I'm pretty sure. Um, they got a, an entire lineup of these type of bobbers. Awesome, awesome bobbers. The reason I like these ones, especially for ice fishing, um, if you are getting ice on the line and your bobber gets stuck, like if you got the line going through this way, you're trying to fight the ice through the bobber, like you're trying to bring the ice through the middle of the grommet. Um, this way you can just pop it right off and not have to fight the bobber. So. Number one Aberdeen hook by Zone Lock. Um, Zone Lock, Rod and Bobs, they're all part of the same company, so. Based in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, too. My home state. All right, Aberdeen hook. We're just gonna tie a snell knot, okay? Super simple. 
I hope you can see it with the line being so small. You're going to take your line, you're going to put it through your eyelet, and you're going to pull it out away from the uh, point of the hook. So here's the point of the hook. My line went away from it. Okay, you're going to pull out about four to five inches. You're then going to take your line and pinch it to the, the shank of the hook right before the bend there. Okay. Then you're going to wrap that tag end around both the line you got pinched and the shaft of the hook four or five times. There we go. Then you go ahead and pinch all that together. Now you're going to create this loop at the bottom. You're going to take your tag end and put it through that loop. Through that loop just like that. Okay, so now I have my line going through my loop right there. Then you're going to slowly pull it tight and make sure all these little wraps stay below the eyelet of the hook. Pull it up to the bottom of that hook, or the bottom of the eyelet. There you go, pull it snug and clip off your tag end. Get yourself a snell knot. Notice, hopefully this shows up on the GoPro, the line's coming out this way, okay? So when you set the hook, oftentimes when you're casting a bobber out, you're casting away from the bank or the, the boat. When you set the hook, it provides leverage against that top of that eyelet and forces, see how I notice it? It forces that hook point up into the fish's mouth. So that's why snell knots for slip bobber fishing, it's a, it's a pretty go-to knot if you're going to use live bait. Now, if you're using a, a jig, just a jig and a plastic, you could probably go to get away with a loop knot um, to just give that a little more free movement. But since we're using live minnows, we don't need to have any more free movement. So I'm going to put this weight about mm, five, six inches above my hook, depending on how aggressive they are or how you want to adjust the weight. So if they're super aggressive crappie, you can get away with putting that weight a foot above your minnow. And that's because they'll chase that minnow around. Okay, that minnow swimming around down there, they'll go ahead and chase it because they're super aggressive. If they're not that aggressive, you gotta probably put the weight closer to the hook or either even right above that hook. And what that does is it keeps that minnow in place so that crappie doesn't have to chase it so much. That usually happens on a negative bite. We've had some warmer temps come through the past couple days. I'm thinking the bite's gonna be at least semi-aggressive, so we're gonna go with uh, that weight about five, six inches above the hook. Well, it looks like, looks like we got a uh, bunch of fish down there. So we're gonna drop down with that live minnow and uh, hopefully catch us one. There's one. Man, that was a light bite. Cause it's not that big of a fish, but it is a crappie. Crappie number one of the day. He's not going to measure though. Dang. Hopefully there's some bigger ones down there. It's like a five inch fish, maybe. That was a super light bite. Water temps are 33 degrees, so <laughs> I didn't expect much, but dang. Got him. Man, that's, that was a light type tap. See him? This guy is bigger, but I don't think he's gonna measure. Uh, that is not a nine inch crappie, unfortunately. There's a bump board over here. But I'm pretty sure that guy's about a seven inch. Oh, you think this bump board's been used before? Where, where's the nine? Three, four, right here on this it's light but that's the nine holy smokes does he measure no way that is a nine and an eighth inch crappie oh You've gotta be kidding me that is a nine and an eighth inch crappie he actually measures i got a second you know what i should go grab my bump board that might be a that might be a keeper i'm gonna go grab my bump board well, I brought, grabbed my bump board from the boat. That one's a little faded. So. And uh, since that's my first legal crappie of the trip, he's coming home with me. I'll probably even fry him up tonight. But uh, yeah, since the entire lake is frozen over, we're catching monsters, absolute monsters from the heated dock. Actually, thankful. I'm very thankful for this heated dock because without this, I wouldn't be catching crappie right now. 
I'd be stuck trying to grind it out on that Osage River below the dam. But we got some crappie for the frying pan. There he is. That quick rise got him. And another, oh wait, is that a black? Is that a black crappie? I think we got ourselves our first black crappie. Yeah, I think that is. It might be a hybrid actually. It's definitely not a white. It doesn't have the bars. It's pale though. These fish are from the depths. These black crappie are going to be super pale this time of year. Actually through most of the winter because they're, well, we're in 18 feet of water, so not a whole lot of light getting down there. Coloration isn't that great. What are you, five inches? Oh, gosh dang, you're, you're almost seven. Good for you, bud. There it is. Yep, that quick rise got him again. This might be a good one. Ooh. Oh, he just got stuck underneath the dock. Keeper. Quick comment section, what do you think? Oh. That'd be a negative. That's a seven and three quarter inch fish. There he is. Well, at least we're catching crappie, right? Could be on that river catching Asian carp. Yep, there he is. Be a, be a nine inch fish. I can't believe I'm saying that. Can't believe I have to say that. Be a nine inch fish. I switched it up to a little ice fishing jig just to try to get a few more bites since we're not going after one pound crappie. There's one. Does not feel very big though. Fishing in the nursery. Catching a bunch of them, but no biggins. Come on, take it, dude. Come on, take it, take it. There he is. Yes. Got one. Got one on the minnow. There we go. Not a keeper, though. I don't think. My phone is blowing up. Yeah. Catching monsters. If I title it that, people will eat me alive in the comment section. That is uh, about a seven and a half inch fish. All right. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to do, ladies and gentlemen. This is a tough situation. Let's walk outside, I'll show you this. Show you what's going on. All right, let's put another minnow on. We caught a fish on our slip bobber rig. That's why you have it. it uh, it's either gonna catch all the fish or <laughs> like one or two while you're jigging. It's just having that second line out there to give you an option of maybe these fish don't want an aggressive jigging pattern or they don't want whatever you're throwing on your jig pole. All right, here's what we got going on. Well, as you can see, the good news is the lake finally opened up over there along that entire shoreline because the wind's been absolutely pounding uh, this shoreline. Good news is it might be able to get in that cove there might be some crappie in there. I would like to get behind, there's a cove right here. It's a feeder creek that goes back in. There's a crap load of crappie in there, but I don't know if it's, I don't know. It's pretty well protected from the wind, so I'm not sure if it's uh, gonna be opened up. That, that's the cove I need to get into. If I can get into that cove, we can get some videos done today. Well, not today, tomorrow. Problem is, see this? This right here is the boat launch that I'm supposed to uh, launch at. And it's all this ice, because the wind's blowing across the lake, all this ice is blown right into the boat launch. So I, might, I brought a spud bar, might be able to chisel my way out. Otherwise, I, I don't know. I am trying to stay optimistic for this trip, but it is not easy. You know, this is just how my work schedule worked out being able to take this week off and I was hoping all this ice would actually be 
by the time I got here, I was hoping it was going to be like this, where I knew there was going to be some ice chunks floating around, but by midweek, everything would have been melted. Um, we're here on Wednesday. It's midweek, and it finally is like this, to where these ice chunks are moving around. I don't know. Possibly by Saturday. You know, it could be one of those last last minute deals where Saturday I'm able to actually get out on the lake uh, or drive to upper end of Osage or um, Gravois Mills area. Try to catch some crappie up there for right now. We're gonna go back inside right there, Point View Resort. They also get gas for you. If you need boat gas, we got gas for you. Let's go back inside and try to catch some crappie. Curious. That's a little guy. That's a super little guy. But that's gonna end it. Catching monster dinks. Man. Possibly by Saturday, I won't be catching these anymore. Yeah, if I can hold it closer, it might look bigger. But uh, this is pretty much my ice fishing setup. I'll have one rod jigging, the other slip bobber with a live minnow um, for crappie or bluegill. Depends what you know what I'm set up on. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. That slip bobber setup. When the crappie are super lethargic, I probably should have put that that weight all the way down towards the minnow. Oh, speaking of which, here we go. Got him. Got him. Oh yes, that's our second keeper. There we go. That one's gonna end it. Speaking of that slip bobber, that's why it's effective. That's got to be keeper number two. I'm gonna fry up two crappie. Oh, yep, he's nine on the money. Keeper number two, yes. Well, I got two keepers. Fry these up. Hopefully by Friday or Saturday, I'll be able to get at some of these coves and catch limits of these. Well, hopefully bigger than this guy. This guy's gonna go on the stringer. Yeah, whopping two crappie. I'll link this stringer below. I think this is a cool stringer to have. I, I normally used it for trout fishing, but it's a pretty cool stringer to have. I, unless you're, you know, catching 50 crappie at a time. Just locks in like that. You can slide this thing down. Just push this in, slide that up to unlock it. Slides right back down. Yeah, there we go. Two crappie. I might come back later tonight too. We'll see if we can catch a full limit throughout the day, but right now I gotta get changed because I gotta go have dinner with Kyler. He's in the same boat as me. He's actually trying to call people and reschedule guide trips because we got all the ice still on the lake. But appreciate you watching. Leave, I'll leave the link to everything below, the ice rods, the slip bobber rig, and the, uh, the stringer system. So at least I had this option to come here, fish the heated dock, catch some crappie, it's not really what I wanted to do, but it's the only option I had since everything else is iced up. But appreciate you watching. We'll see you.